Um, I want to chill. I want to chill, and I want to play some Gioco pianos. I've actually been studying something, and this is fascinating, and maybe chat can even help me out here. There's an opening I've been looking at, and it is a popular opening, but it actually doesn't really have a name. So I'm a bit curious. Maybe somebody out there will know a little bit more about this than I do. But essentially what I've been doing for the last several days is I'm trying to come up with a complete repertoire with the bishop's opening, which is an opening that not a lot of players play with the white pieces. And essentially against everything, I just want to follow it up with d4 as soon as possible. So for example, if they play knight f6, you can just play d4. Don't play openings which don't have names, P. <laughs> Thank you again, Gotrix. But essentially, this one is good, and it's popular, and there's like 78,000 games with it, but it doesn't have a name. Like, I don't know how this one doesn't have a name. But here's what, here's how it, you get there. You take, okay, whatever, and this is some opening that you can play, and similarly, if on this move they stop you, either with knight to c6 or even with bishop to c5, you can prepare it again, you can play knight to f3, and then if they play knight f6, you can play here. And all of these things, like, they have names. Like, I think if they take, you know, you might see, um, this is the, the Scotch, Dubois, whatever. These are all very similar lines, where after d5, you can play bishop to b5. There's also the max lang, which is here, if bishop to c5, we got the max lang, you can play e5. There's all these lines that are very similar, and here you can actually take on f6, or you can play in a similar fashion. But if they play the Gioco piano, which is bishop to c5, now, this is like Black's best attempt to just truly prevent us from playing d4. And it is possible here to actually just go for d4, but I don't really trust this gambit at like a high level. This is playable. And like you, you can't actually play this way. Um, wait, but the, the line that kind of makes it interesting is if Bishop takes. Hey, uh, Nidalarium. Ooh, I should know how to say cn, because it's like Nidarian, right? So CN, the C is silent. Mm, delirium. Thank you so much for the prime. All right, Jeff Bezos money. Thank you so much. Uh, but the line that kind of makes it, at least at a like a supercomputer level, <laughs> unplayable. This is totally playable in like Blitz and whatever. Is this line where white castles often trying to follow it up with F4. And while this is playable, I want like a super solid way for white. So I'm looking at lines with C3, Knight F6. And this is actually the main line. So here, according to this database, if we switch over to the master database, it's different. If you look on chess base, it, these numbers are a lot closer. So there's a lot of D4 games that are missing from the Lee Chess master database. Um, but these lines are, okay, D3 is more popular, the, the Gioco Pianissimo. But D4 is like a super popular opening. Aronian plays it a ton, a lot more than, than you see in this. Uh, Mohamed Yarov has played this a ton. If you switch this over to Lee Chess, uh, Magnus, Dr. Nikerstein, he's played this a ton, and he's, he's even played it with the line that I want to see. But here, after D takes, I've been looking here at a lot of moves. I've been looking at C takes D4, which is the main move. Uh, I've been looking at castles. I've been looking B4. You kind of throw that one out pretty quickly. It's interesting, but it's not so great. But I've been looking at E5. I'm wondering if this is actually White's best idea here. Obviously, there's Evan's Gambit, as chat is pointing out. Uh, which has the same idea, you sack a pawn and then you play c3 and d4. So that's also, you know, another totally possible if you're just looking for, like, a, a gambit repertoire. I'm looking for something different just in the sense that, like, I don't know, I'm just trying to, like, just follow the simple logic that I'm going to play d4 under normal circumstances as quickly as possible. And one way here is this move e5. And this one doesn't seem to have a name. This one is, like, totally normal. The So the odd moves that we played... Were to get here, it was the d4, which is was actually very popular and a lot of high-level players have played it. But then after taking, like, does, this one has a name. This is like the Greco Gambit, the traditional way. Then if I play e5, it'll say center attack. And if I keep going with d5, uh, bishop to b5, it says that this is the Greco Gambit. But to my understanding, what Greco actually analyzed in this position was takes takes and in this position bishop to b4 where greco gave this line knight to c3 nowadays we know that this is a little bit dubious but the point that he analyzed was if takes castles if they fall for this main trick which is actually one of the most popular tricks what's actually kind of cool another thing i was looking at um if you do it by 
If you just go by rating if, of the lowest rated players on Lee Chess and you just see what the main, main, main line is, it's actually this. So if you're, if you're 16 to 1800 or under, you should just play this because people take care. So this is like 5,000 games or so. Everybody falls for this trick at the lowest level. And the line that Greco analyzed was queen to b3. And there's some crazy ways for black to maybe possibly save it. It's good for white, but maybe d5. The point is, though, Greco analyzed all of this with bishop to g5. And after this, he said play knight e5, play queen f3. And this is obviously winning for white. We got supercomputers these days. So it says if they go here, play this. And this just wins for white. No question about it. The game is over. And you can see white scores fantastically well in uh, in any any database with this on there. But so that's why I'm a little bit confused. In this position, if right now we play e5, which is the secondary move, but if you add this up, it's about seventy-eight thousand games. There's about five thousand games in the chess-based database. Hey Johnny with the prime. Hey, I love the primes. Thank you so much, man. Uh. It, there's like 5,000 games, and it's all top players. It, but like, what is this? The, the center attack? Is that really what this is called? It doesn't really have a name. But I'm fascinated, and if you are going to play d4 in this position, I think the DPN easy mode, this is probably the absolute best way to play it if you just want the, the tiniest little advantage. But I'm committed to this idea. d4, it should be a playable move. Um, but after this, I've looked at other moves. I've looked at this... I think with best play, it's probably really equal, but there's even some positions. There's one position where black can like force a draw. Um, there's lines where it just, it, it feels about equal objectively. And for this, I'm just kind of taking a look at just absolute objectivity from a computer standpoint for, for a repertoire that maybe could last for a lifetime. Um, Castles is almost good. And I think in practice, this Volbrot Bard Gambit, <laughs> I assume it's a German name, so I'm saying Volbrot, but maybe it's Walbrot. I don't know. Uh, this gambit is actually interesting, except for just one line that gives Black a good end game. And I feel like Black actually has good chances here. But I've been playing this one actually on Lee Chess with great success. So this is an interesting idea. But objectively, I just don't think it's all there. So E5, and this is what a lot of good players have been playing. And this is something I'd be interested in playing if there's a viewer out there that wants to go for the Gioco Piano. I'd be happy to try to go into this line. But just briefly, the main point for those that might be curious, uh, we'll switch back to the good people. The master database is you play bishop to b5, and now after knight to e4, only now do you capture. And here, the story gets more complicated. So again, I don't think this is the Greco Gambit. Maybe it is. It's just some sort of weird extension of it. But I don't know. How does this opening not have a name? Okay, but this is definitely the best move in the main line. But here it's interesting. If you play bishop to b4, this will change. And this is now the Anderson variation. So it's the Italian game classical variation, Greco Gambit Anderson variation is what it says, where the main idea is to play bishop to d2, not knight to d2, which a lot of people, I think, might expect. The, the main point here is that you want to get rid of this guy. This guy is kind of an annoyance in all these lines. You get rid of this guy, you go like this, after some sort of castling. castling. The main idea is for white is this knight is going to head towards the queen side. You're going to play like a3 and, and rook to c1, and this knight's going to chill over on c5. You actually are, in many lines, threatening to just simply take this knight if it doesn't move right away. Black should be going like this with this kind of maneuver, which has one idea of blocking this diagonal in a, in a way and getting the guy over here. And personally, I love this pawn structure for white because I'm going to uh, I'm going to be going on the king side. Like, this is so easy. If you get all this in, this is just like a normal attack. And I also feel good on the queen side, because I'm going to get a minority attack. Like, this guy is going to move. If it doesn't move, you just simply take here. And after they take back, you can play queen to c2. Going for this, where I think uh, one good line is if here, you don't have to take it right away, because you take it right away, maybe this bishop's taking here, rook's taking on b2, that kind of stuff. You don't have to take this right away, or at all. White will just be doing very well in a, a position like this. So normally they're going to go like this, if they're good. I think if you put it on the Lee Chess database, most people play bishop to g4. Um, so this actually is kind of interesting. From a practical point of view, if you're playing <laughs> normal people, they play bishop g4, and this is actually uh, very bad for black. I mean, it's a, it's a great position for white after uh, bishop takes c6. Um... But yeah, anyways, all of this to say that back in our position here, after uh, they move their knight in here, they should just go back. 
And this is kind of one of the positions that I think is very interesting. It goes knight to c3, castles, bishop to e3. There are some sacrificial ideas for black on the d4 square, so it's kind of important to keep that under control after bishop to g4. Queen to c2 is an interesting move. I guess in this database, it's not the most popular move. Oh no, you play h3 first. Um, taking is bad, going back here, and then if they go back, now you go to b3. Something like this is very interesting. Black will again do this kind of maneuver. A lot of top players are trying to play for f6 or even f5, and objectively this is probably very close to equal, but uh, I don't know. I think it's a very interesting position to try, and it gets even more complicated, because here black can play, I guess, a normal looking move, or even this tactical knight to d2 is an interesting idea where, uh, you know, white is going to be able to pick up this guy. After we move our rook, though, we're pretty much ready to blast off on the king side. So if the bishop has to go back and, and we get to uh, do whatever we want to do, whether it's knight a4, knight f3, f4, um, these kinds of things are going to start happening. And the other option is to take here. So it goes like queen takes. We can do lots of trading. And uh, in some position like this, either queen to d7 or knight to g6. Knight to g6 actually has the point that you're stopping us from going here and then launching our pawn. Um, so it's kind of interesting. And if here you go like here, where you don't want to have to play a move like h6, here's checkmate. Um, so if you have to do something like this, it should be reasonable for white. So overall, I like white's chances. And I think somebody actually said, uh, they sent a challenge as black to try it. So let's play. Uh, oh, I don't see it anymore. If uh, Nidalirium actually wants to play a game, a rated game of chess, a three minute game. Okay. Oh, it passed, it passed. If you do want to play a game, we can try this. I want to check out the, the Gioco Piano here. So our opponent here has graciously allowed us the opportunity to test out our, our new gambit, not a gambit, our new uh, opening. So we'll play D4. If we can play D4 as soon as possible, that's my idea. I just want to play d4. Have you ever played normal chess? I'm playing normal chess right now as we speak. Uh, okay, so the opponent has not taken yet, which is interesting. Okay, I'm going to play knight to f3. <laughs> I'm hoping this d-pawn gets captured at, uh, at some moment here. It's going to be a little bit harder for a Gioco piano. How are we going to get back to the Gioco piano? All right, he's going out. I think he's looking up what he's supposed to be doing. But now we just don't quite have it, do we? <laughs> How are we going to get there? All right, I'm going to play c3 to give you the option of bishop to c5, which will let us transpose. And so bishop c5, and we should be able to transpose into what we're actually trying to do here. Okay, so my idea is to play e5 right now before castling. And off to the races we go. d5, the only real move for black. And we'll take her from there. And so this is my unnamed line against the Gioco Piano. Yeah, we didn't quite get the right move order, but we got there in the end. We got there. So d5. d5 is the move. Everything else is bad. But, oh, this move, is, so it's really tricky, this move. This move is bad, but it is, it is tricky. So I'm going to take here. Mm, somebody, I could castle, which is interesting, because if he takes, maybe queen d5. If I take this bishop b4, which is just normal. Um, oops. Uh, oh, oh, no, no, I remember. It's here. It's here, right? I'm trying to remember what it is. I think it's this one. Knight takes f2. I feel like this is how it goes, and then knight takes f2, and my king goes to g3, and it's not even a big deal. Okay, if I remember right, this is actually the line. It goes like here, here, takes king g3, and then you try to play h3 and bring your king back, and it should be good for white, but obviously pretty scary. <laughs> Ooh, takes right away, sacking the knight. I'm not sure about that one. I will now take the knight. So knight f2, I don't think it's working for black, but I think it is the right way to continue. And then my king is running around, so maybe maybe it gets interesting. Um, and I'm just, I'm threatening knight takes c3, so probably black goes here, but I get more pieces active, and I assume this is good for me. Okay, I'll just take this guy. And then I can protect it, bishop to f4, or do I just castle? Or do I play queen d5? Queen d5, d6, though. 
I can also just play queen c2 maybe. I'm going to castle. We'll give one pawn back just to be absolutely safe. And... Hmm. Let's think about this one just a little bit. Well, we don't want to waste too much time, but... All right, I'm going to put the, the rook here. Makes sense to me. But now I can capture this, and I set up a little threat of uh, bishop takes oh, h7. And recapturing the rook, threatening to do stuff on the h-file. You know, queen in, bishop in, should be a pretty massive attack now. And if not, I'll take this or something else. Um reasonable but now I go here and here threatening to come in f6 I actually have a funny move I think I can just bring the rook in with the idea that I threaten to take and give a checkmate okay so I'm gonna bring my very last piece in And so f6, I still can take. You can block with a queen. It'll be winning. Maybe I'm not as winning as I <laughs> as I want to be, but I'll be winning enough. f6 exploits the pin. I can grab here. Oh, king there, though, is wrong. Uh, you had to take with a queen, and it allows some stuff. So this was an interesting game, and I definitely think... Uh, maybe I don't know if my opponent actually is a, a Gioco piano player or not, so I do appreciate you uh, playing it. Uh, again, we kind of got there. We got there in a weird order. The main idea of the Gioco piano is just to never, ever allow me under any circumstance. So if I want to play d4, it's going to have to be at a near sacrificial cost is the normal way of getting there. But somehow we, uh, we transposed and we got there. And my idea is e5 in this position. Um where he hopped in, and this is interesting. So d5 is what we had actually just analyzed, but uh, you got confused in the opening. No, no big deal, no big deal at all. It's uh, it's confusing, and I think, honestly, even if you're booked up as a Gioco piano player, um, you really need to know all of these lines quite well. They're, they're all very reasonable. Everything, it feels like this position after d4 is actually just about zero, zero, zero. It's really close to uh, to equal. And so for that reason, I think it's really hard to be a Gioco piano player. Like, you have to know so much. And if my opponent wasn't a Gioco piano player to begin with, it's really a, a difficult opening to play. But it's it's very sound. If you know what you're doing, it's a very sound way for, for black to reply. d5 is the only way. However, knight e4 and even knight to g4, they lead to some fascinating stuff. Like, this is bad. And bishop d5. I was happy to have remembered this. Bishop d5. I'm going to turn the computer on just for a few moves here. Um, the point is you should take on f2. So here you can take this, and after capturing here with check, uh, the best move is king to g3. I don't know how deep this is going to go. I was I was analyzing this earlier this week and uh, with, with a stronger engine, and I concluded king g3 was the best move here. This stockfish, not too impressed with it. Uh, but yeah, it goes something like this and this, and then I have to play like h3, and I run around, and I think I think it's much higher than this. It's It's more than plus one. If I, you know, if my deeper analysis holds up here. And, uh, you know, my king's on g3, so you know, anything can happen. But let's... Another interesting line was... Let me see if I can remember what it is. So knight to g4 also leads to some fascinating sacrifices. Um, what was the main idea? So, I, let's see, I can't even remember what it was. But c takes d4, knight takes d4. There's all these sacrifices on the d4 square. That can be potentially interesting. And after here, now can you take on f2? There's this kind of stuff. I guess d5 is what the engine's giving, and that makes sense. There's these kinds of things to look out for where... I guess I had bishop takes f7 there. Otherwise, you know, there'd be this kind of stuff where... Okay, it's saying king e3 and, you know, but... But, you know, there's some crazy stuff here. Uh, king g3 in the other line. Now that's crazy. I think it's the best move, though. That That one I remember quite well. Knight g4, I'm a little bit hazy on, to be honest. What's this timeout, Redeem? Ooh, you get timed out. Did you do it? I'll just give you a free timeout for 100 bits. Hey, how about a free timeout, courtesy of me? Boom. 
there you go. We'll see you in 600 seconds. <laughs> um, but yeah, okay, so as it as it were, our game continued with e5, the knight went here. So I remembered this move, and here I think I am just up a piece. Uh, looks like someone's already run the engine. So we know the evaluation, is, it's plus three now. So this is just a piece. And uh, so I guess from here on out, it was relatively clean. So I guess I missed something right here. Ah, I can see everything. So knight takes what e5. Now? Knight takes e5, rook takes. What's the idea? Anyone see the immediate idea? Hey, it's Rylar with the sub. Holy cow, two months. Thank you so much. What's the idea after rook takes? Rook takes. Why is this so winning? Rook takes just bishop f4. I mean, yeah, it looks good. And you can't go back because my... Oh, 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 you can probably never go back. You're going to have to sacrifice because of, of this kind of stuff. Ah, here you can sack the rook now. But yeah, 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 okay. So that's all pretty good. Um, so what, what actually happened in our game? I played rookie one, and then this, this drops a, a piece to a similar tactic. Um, now it's mate. <laughs> so I'm just following a, a mating pattern. Maybe I slipped up just a little bit here. You can still take with the queen. <laughs> Hope for the best in this position. But yeah, obviously I can understand why somebody wouldn't want to, for example, <laughs> play this position, which should just be losing. But hey, uh, it was a very interesting game, and I just wanted to point out that opening because it doesn't have a name. This is one of the most popular openings. Just one last time to put it on the board. Well, I guess we got there somehow, some way. One of the most popular openings that actually doesn't have a name. Um... If you see this on a YouTube video soon, it'll say, how does this popular chess opening with 78,000 whatever number of games not have a name? It should have a name. Uh, here, by the move order we got, it says, Scotch Game, Scotch Gambit, Dubois, Ready Defense. But is that really what it is? I don't know. If you know, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you let me know in the comments below what the name is. If you're the first one to let me know what the real name is and we can verify it, I'll pin your comment and tell you you're great. So... <laughs> Yeah, subscribe as always, and uh, thanks to everybody hanging out on Twitch and YouTube.